All right, I don't normally film everything I do, but this project's turning out pretty decent. First time for me to ever lay cinder block. I found one gentleman on YouTube that sounded like he knew exactly what he was talking about. So I just went with his lead and it turned out uh, very well. So this is just the start of a project. First came in the gate and then I had to put the pad in and then I built the cinder block up and then I built concrete caps at the top. That was quite the little learning experience, but I got it done. Now I'm gonna be putting manufactured stone on the outside of this cinder block, which requires a scratch coat to be applied to the outside of the cinder block. And then it has to set for at least 24 hours. And then I'll come back out here with uh, some manufactured stone of which I have never worked with either. And then I'll be applying it. Like I said, this turned out pretty well. I didn't need to do the finishing touches on the cinder block since it's getting a scratch coat. But since this is my first attempt to do cinder block, I thought, what the heck, I'll go ahead and do it. Just get a little bit of experience in here. So I'm using the same stuff I put the cinder block up with. It's the green bag of uh, Quick Creek. This is the commercial grade Type S mortar. Already has everything mixed in it. All you gotta do is just add water and get after it. I understand why a rock mason is never happy for your mud man when he's mixing up the concrete. He may have it absolutely perfect and then within just a couple of minutes it's suddenly unusable because it's too dry. This stuff will continue to soak up just a little bit for a few minutes. So you want to let it set for a little bit before applying it. Okay, so this stuff's pretty thin right now, but I guarantee you within just a few minutes it'll thicken up. So this is just a scratch coat. I want something on the uh, cinder block that will act as an anchor point for the manufactured stone when I start applying it. This is the trowel I'll be using. So it's going to create grooves in the concrete where the new concrete will grip real well. It was almost exactly two minutes and it just suddenly thickened up. Look at that. It's not running at all. So I'm going to add just a little bit more to it. I don't want it quite that thick. It's close, but I don't want it quite that thick when I start troweling it on. Got it thinned out. Yeah, I like the looks of that. It looks good. Now let's give this a shot. I'll have to get the feel for this because uh, you're seeing me do this for the very first time. <laughs> All right, there's definitely a learning curve on this. This is the way I'm doing it, but rock masons may have other ways of doing it. Just putting that on there with the flat edge, and then I'm coming in with the teeth. And giving some horizontal lines. That way that manufactured stone will grip onto these ridges here and it should stick real good once everything cures the new mortar will go on here and it should just latch onto this it took about 15 minutes and trying about 10 different things this seems to be working the best for me my mud needs to be pretty loose too so i'm going to go all the way around this one and the second column I've got to let it set up for at least 24 hours. Looks like a different guy did this one here. Key to it is get that mortar thin. This one up here stuck really good. And it's because I had the mortar almost soupy. It was sloppy. But man, it went on a lot easier. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit. I'm going to knock the high spots off of here so it doesn't interfere with the uh, manufactured stone. I'll just take a broom to it, knock all these high spots off. Won't be any big deal. Everything else is sticking real good to the concrete. All right, looks like we're ready for an update. So I didn't film any of this on the back side, mostly because I've never done this before and I didn't have a clue what I was doing. So I decided I better figure it out first. I learned real quick that a level is your best friend. Early on, right about down here, I got a couple of rucks a little bit crooked while I was still trying to figure things out. It didn't take long to realize I better get a level out and start using the level. I also learned a few tricks as I went along, just by trial and error. The grinder with a cutting blade is super handy. 
Also, if I do get a rock that's crooked like that, there is no problem with ripping it off, removing the mortar, and slapping some fresh mortar back on there and stick it right back on there. No problem at all. So anyways, haul the corners are cut at 45s. After I get all the rock work done, then what I'll do is I'll take my grout bag, I'll mix up some really loose mortar uh, that's dyed brown, and then I'll go in between all the stones. And it should finish it out and make it look pretty good. This is where I'm gonna pick up at, and hopefully today get the entire front done. So what I try to do is I try to stick to some of my larger, wider stones on one row, and then I'll switch to some that are a little bit more narrow and then just kind of switch it back and forth and then I even have a, uh, a line of really narrow rocks just kind of break it all up all right for this project this is what I'm using I'm using the uh, concrete and the green bag mace mason mix type s mortar I'm using my tile saw they have a size up from this that's actually four stone that acts almost like a miter saw it comes down on the stone much better this is almost too small because some of the stones I have are so thick that when you put this at a 45 degree angle, it hits the guard. But that's what this is for. I can come in there and complete my 45 degree cuts with this grinder. And I can also shape stone. Of course, I have to have a generator out here because there's no electricity. Chloe scratching her back. Got me a bucket of water. I've got a couple levels, a small level, then a medium sized level, and then a six foot level so I can go over the entire distance and make sure I'm not leaning to one side. I'm not dropping down or raising up. Got my trowel, just a basic short trowel, tape measure, bucket for your mortar, and that is it. It's pretty simple. Not, not a whole lot of gear required for this. And for the money that you save doing this yourself, you will pay for one of these several times over just on your first project, uh, especially if it's a project this size. Okay, I've got it pretty close to where I want it. I absolutely would not want it any thicker than what it is right now. So whenever you mix this up, you give it a good shake, you don't want a whole lot of peaks showing up. It's already it's just a little bit thicker than what I like. So have your water bottle handy where you can mix just a little bit more water to it. Now keep in mind, right after you mix this stuff up, it will continue to set up over at least two minutes real fast. After that, it kind of slows down setting up. It will continue to set up, but that first two minutes, it's like the concrete in there is still absorbing moisture and, uh, and it'll firm up considerably. All right, so that's getting pretty soupy, or at least the way I like it. Now, I wanna mud up one of these rocks. I've got three different shades. I purposely had them mix primary color is this color, and then they gave me probably about 10% of the white or the lighter beige. And then they gave me this really dark, uh, almost has some red hues to it, about 10% of that. So I will mix down through here a few of the red and a few of the light bays just to kind of break everything up because you don't want all your stone one color now it looks like i'm using some of the wider pieces so that's what i need to look for some wide pieces to come over here and bridge across i can either bridge to here or i can come all the way across you don't want your seams to line up it's going to look goofy and that's just not the way uh, masonry jobs are done you don't want the rock to end right here. You want it to come, at least come over a little bit and bridge the gap. All right, right off the bat, I've got a nice big one right here. And that's gonna go all the way across and bridge two gaps. Now I'll bring this over, touching that other stone, there'll be a little bit of a, a space in there just cause the contour of the stone. But I'll get down here and I'll raise this up a little bit until it's level. I'll also put a level on top of this and go all the way across and make sure it's not getting crazy out of line. Anyways, that's what you do. You just uh, put that rock up there, dry fit it, make sure it's going to look good, and then grab you some mortar and butter up your stone. All right, that's perfectly level, which is better than I had hoped. I 
got a little thick on the butter, but that's okay. It squeezes out and you just wipe off the excess right off the top. Looks pretty level, looks good. All the way across, it's perfectly level. You just wanna make sure your individual stones aren't sloping down or turning. Uh, a little bit is fine, but uh, you really wanna have them pretty straight. I've learned I like to tilt it in at the top first and then squeeze it onto the wall, rolling it down in a downward motion. And it pushes a lot of that grout down here and it helps brace the stone on top of the stone that's already set. You'll still have some squish out on the top up here if you have a lot of mortar on the backside. Now I don't want to go bumping this. The next stone, I just want to gently bring it right up against this one. But if I get too rough and I wiggle it around, I'll pop this right off of here. Now if that happens, don't freak out. It's no big deal. You can take your stone off. This mortar will come off with the stone. Just scrape it off into your bucket off to the side. Butter up some more loose material onto your stone and slap it right back up on here. As you push it on there, you want to pretty much have it where you want it when you stick it on there. All right, I found a larger stone. It's a little bit heavy, so I took some of my scrap concrete pieces and just lightly put under there just to kind of shore it up a little bit. So as it grabs, it doesn't try to sink down on me. It keeps it in its one position, and that's gonna make sure that mortar gets a good hold. Now I need to find me a piece for this corner. Looks like it's gonna be three inches to the inside cut. So I need to find me a, a nice wide piece and then measure it up on the tile saw and give it a cut. Okay, that piece actually looks really good and I should be able to fit it on the saw without much difficulty. So it's gonna fit something like that right there. This is what I was talking about. My stone is too thick for this saw. What I do is I take my grinder and the diamond tip blade and I line that blade up with that cut that's already there. So long as I make sure this blade lines up with that cut, the original cut, it should all work out right. cut wasn't absolutely perfect but that's a good thing about that diamond tip blade on the hand grinder you can smooth it out all right so it's going to fit just like that and looking down at it from the top you can see where it leaves at a 45 degree angle right off the corner okay good deal butter it up slap it on here and then i'll go for the next row and that's really all you have to do is just work your way piece by piece all the way up to the top it's really pretty simple once you get the hang of it and it's actually <laughs> to a degree it's actually enjoyable but you won't learn it until you jump out there and try it okay here's a prime example of what i was talking about this stone was a little bit heavy and it popped off it just dropped and i didn't put a spacer under here to support it so you just peel it back it'll leave the scratch coat moist and then you got the layer of mortar still stuck to the stone so all you have to do break it off off to the side You'll mix that in later. Come back over here, loosen up your mortar, rebutter it. Knock that peak off, put it back on there. So I've restuck it on here. And I put a couple little spacers just to support it while this mortar sets up. Like I say, it's real loose. All it's doing is just supporting. It's not lifting. Easy peasy. So don't freak out if your stone pops off right off the bat. All right, I'm going to continue on up this wall. Put the camera down for a while because I'm getting concrete all over it. And it's making a horrible mess. I'll bring you back when I'm done. Okay, I've made it all the way to the top. Now I'm going to keep on doing this all the way around. Now I've still got one side to do on this. Then I've got another column to do. I'm at it again, slowly but surely. Had a lot of freezing temperatures and some rain, so I've had to back off the project till it got at least halfway decent where I could get out here and work. Today I'm going to go the rest of the way up on this column 
And then I'm gonna add this pretty plaque up here. The game plan is to have the plaque mounted on one of these uh, lines of rocks, just about a half inch above it, and then I'll rock around it. Okay, I've rocked up to the point to where I can put my plaque. So I've got my plaque holes drilled. I need to get some sockets because it's just flathead and they're not wanting to dig into that concrete, obviously. Normally, I start at the corner, cut a 45, and I work my way all the way across to the other side. But in this case, with this plaque here, I don't want a bunch of cut rock exposed on the side. As you can see, the rock is supposed to look natural on the sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the stone here, and then I'm going to work my way out on both sides out to the corners. That way I've got a nice rock looking edge on the side of the stone. And I'll just work my way all the way up. And I may have to get a little creative here, but I'll just search for stones that will fit the best possible way without having to do too much cutting. All right, screws are tightened up and she's on there. Now all I have to do is rock around it. That and take a picture and send it to my wife. She'll be a happy camper with that up. All right, I've worked my way up and around the plaque and I was just using the last of my concrete that I had in the tub. So it looks like I got about a third of the way up anyways on one side. So the stonework is finally all done on both columns and all the way around. So now it's time to grout in between the stone. That's today's project, or actually probably the next couple of days. Now there's some areas where the, uh, the grout spaces are really wide, and I'm going to put some pieces of stone in between there. So what I'm first going to do is come out here with my angle grinder and the cutting blade, and, and I'm going to cut up a bunch of small pieces where I, I can put slivers of stone in there. And I'm going to use a couple of different colors, and I'm going to use different lengths of stone to put in there and just kind of fill in all the spaces. The primary tools I'm gonna to be using today is a grout bag, of which I've already cut just a little bit of the tip off, because I think this is more of a grout bag for tile work and stuff. Since I'm gonna be using concrete, I went ahead and cut a little bit of the end off of here. You definitely wanna start with your bag wet on the inside, so dip it down in the water, because if you put loose concrete in there, it is going to this bag is going to suck up some of that moisture out of that concrete and it's going to set up almost immediately in your bag. So we'll just let it set in there and soak up a little bit. The other tools I'm going to be using is this slicker here. The slicker tool will go in between the stone and kind of smooth things out. And when I'm finished, I'll come back in with a brush and I'll brush it. Pretty simple process, nothing complicated at all. But you definitely want to take your time and just take a small section at a time. Otherwise, your grout that you fill in here in the stone is going to set up pretty quickly. All right, the stain I'm going to be using for in between the grout, it's a brown stain that you get from any Home Depot. One bottle will do two 80-pound bags. Now, working this bag of concrete is going to wear me out. I'm probably going to do half a bag. So we're going to do 40 pounds at a time, and that's about a quarter of a bottle of this. All right, I'm getting this close to the consistency that I would want if I was laying stone. But since I'm doing grout through a grout bag, I'm going to want it looser. So I'm going to add some more water to this. And I'm going to want this mixture pretty soupy. I want it where it's pretty well close to just running. That way you don't have to fight it in your grout bag. All right, that should be good. If you've got a five-gallon bucket with one of those concrete mixing drill bits, I'd suggest using that. All right, look at that nice brown color to it. It's mixed all the way through, looks really good. I would probably do half or less on this bag because once you squeeze it out onto the stone, once it makes contact with the old concrete and the stone, the moisture is gonna get pulled out of that wet concrete and it's gonna set up pretty quickly. All right, you'll see some of it dribbling out the bottom. That's what you want, or at least that's what I want. You're just gonna, I'll see if I can do this one-handed. You're just gonna squeeze the bag a little bit. 
work your way down the stone. What you're doing is you're locking your stonework in place. You're also making sure water doesn't get back behind the stone. Because if it gets behind the stone and freezes during the winter time, it's going to act like a hydraulic jack and it'll pop your stone off. So you got to make sure all that concrete is squeezed in between those joints real good and airtight. Now I'll go back over this with a slicker and smooth all this down. But I'm getting to the point to where it's hard to do this with one hand. So I'm going to set the camera down and get after it. Well, just real quick. What you do is you come in here with your slicker and just go right down through there. Kind of pushes it inside there. Compacts it a little bit. And don't worry about these little pieces hanging down. After this sets up, you can come back over it with a brush. Some of those spots are a little bit narrow for this slicker. It's a good idea to have a couple of different size slickers. Don't worry too much about it because that brush will come in there and knock that down and smooth it out anyways. So not a big deal. So you just work your way around the stone, squeezing some concrete in there, stopping and getting your slicker out. And then you'll follow up with a brush once it sets up a little bit and knock all the high spots down, any little crumbly pieces that are hanging off, all that stuff. And when you're done, this is going to look really good. All right, I took a break, went and cooked dinner for the family, and now I'm back at it. Got me another fine mixture of brown mud here. Concrete looks really good. So I'm going to fill that bag up and get to work. Okay, it's all grouted in. All right, I may have made the rock masons cringe while doing this little project, but this wasn't a how-to. This video was more just to show you that this project can be accomplished with just the basic tools and just a little bit of knowledge. I watched one video on how to lay masonry concrete. I watched one video on how to lay masonry block. I didn't watch any videos on how to apply the stone. And I watched one video on how to grout in between the stone. And that is it. So if I can do this, I guarantee you anybody can do it. All right. I hope you all enjoyed that video. Catch you next time. Bye.